All right. Just to make sure you guys are in the right speech, uh, this is Brain Games, Make Your Own Biofeedback Video Game. I'm Neon Rain, and this is the amazing Joe Grand. You probably know him because uh, from the badges you have around your neck. So if you don't, you really should know him. Um, so uh, how many of you were at my speech last year and want to know if I actually ponied up the hardware? Hi, guys. It's, it's right here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> For uh, those of you who uh, weren't here last year, I'm actually Canadian, so I had a little problem with bringing electronics into uh, America that weren't labeled, So, um, but I actually have the hardware uh, this year. Um, apparently, if you put uh, uh, static-sensitive stickers on things, they have a tendency not to open them, so uh, two kudos to that. <laughs> so... I guess we'll get started. Um, the problem is I only have a 50-minute slot, and so we have to cover, like, biofeedback and basic electronics and do a demo. So, unfortunately, I'm probably going to go really, really fast. Um, if you uh, don't think that this was long enough time, feel free to, like, go up to DT and be like, hey, give her more time. So, unfortunately, we're going to probably go way too fast. So, but... They lock me in the QA room later, so if I went and you don't understand anything, just let me know and we'll cover it. Oh, and in case you're wondering what the hell's up with the wings, um, Forbes published a picture of me last year, and I was looking very, like, you know, deep and, like, you know, serious, very, very serious. And I'm like, I'm not serious, so just on the off case that anybody takes a picture, that's never going to happen again. So... <laughs> So, yeah, I guess we'll get started. So, um, and also, I'm making the mistake of putting everything on my slides. I'll be reading from my slides, but like I said, 50-minute slot, I don't want you to miss anything. I have a tendency to talk really fast, and so it's quite possible that you'll totally miss stuff. So if you haven't already read the slide, uh, basically we're just covering that the interest in the human brain has been around for a long time. Like, even in Samaria, there was records of some hip, guy or girl um, that was uh, playing with poppy plants and wrote down what their experience was like. So, but even though, like, through the years, um, human behavior has changed radically and our ideas of it, like psychology and what we've believed to be true, um, the methods of studying the brain until very recently had changed very, very little. So, with the evolution of microcomputers and digital technology, everything has been changing uh, to lead us to technology, uh, a technological advance to help us understand the human brain better. So, now, as computers and electronics have become more affordable, a whole do-it-yourself neurohacking movement has emerged. Um, this information has been out forever, but finally, we're able to embrace it and make it our own. Um, so, biofeedback, everybody's like, biofeedback? Um, isn't that been around forever? Isn't that like, you know, eight-track tapes or bell-bottoms and disco? Doesn't that, like, so belong in the past and we should just forget about it? But it's actually making a comeback because in today, with everything so fast-paced and us having to try and take in so much information, everybody's trying to harness their uh, mind-body connection for all it's worth. Everybody wants to be able to process as much data as possible. They want to know as much about their body as possible just to be the best that they can be. So, can't talk about a biofeedback video game without talking about biofeedback. So, according to the American Heritage Science Dictionary, who are very, very serious people, the definition of biofeedback is the techniques of using a monitoring device to obtain information about the involuntary function of the central or autonomic nervous system, such as body temperature and blood pressure, in order to gain some voluntary control over the function. Using biofeedback, individuals can be trained to respond to abnormal measurements and involuntary function. Did anybody else bored of this? Is it just me? Okay. So basically, if we don't want to be, uh, use a bunch of words to explain it, biofeedback devices are devices that give feedback regarding our biology. Easy enough, right? So as a broad generalization, Something as simple as a scale that measures your weight or a thermometer that measures your temperature can be considered a biofeedback device because they provide information about the state of your bodily workings. More traditionally, though, the term 
biofeedback device is usually used to describe equipment that shows in real time, as it's happening, the physical effects of our thoughts, emotions, attitudes, perceptions, and mental processes. So different types of biofeedback device are used to measure different types of things in your body. Unfortunately, I have 50 minutes, so I can't cover. There are many types of biofeedback devices, as there's many types of things that are going on in your body, but we really don't have time to cover that. So if you don't like it, complain to DEFCON. So how does biofeedback work? That's a very good question. Scientists aren't really sure how it works. Um, they do know it works, but they're not exactly sure why. Um, but there does seem to be a common thread. Most people who benefit from biofeedback has conditions that are brought on or made worse by stress. Simple enough? So in the late 1960s, where the term biofeedback was actually coined, biofeedback actually goes back a very long time, but the term biofeedback didn't come around to the 60s. And I'm sure you guys, anyone who's interested in the brain probably heard of the hip time where, you know, they're talking about biofeedback and there would be some great beautiful future that um, we'd have such a major degree of control that we wouldn't need chemical drugs. We would totally just be using biofeedback and it would help with any uncomfortable side effects in patients. And uh, because uh, biofeedback has been around for a long time and there's no negative long-term uh, effects. But what scientists found out is biofeedback isn't magic. It's not gonna cure any diseases if that's what you're looking for or make a person healthy. It can't do these things on its own. Uh, what it can do is be a highly effective, non-invasive tool to control stress by helping people observe the signals generated by their own bodies in a tangible way. And doing so can end up helping people with problems that are linked to or aggravated by stress. And I'm sure it's no big news. I don't have to produce any white papers to prove that stress is a major problem with both mental illness and physical illness, that it will make things worse if you're stressed out. I mean, there's probably nobody in the audience that hasn't been stressed and have felt that feeling in your stomach and have wanted to throw up on your shoes, right? So today, uh, most scientists agree that such high hopes of the past were not realistic. Research shows that we do have more control over so-called involuntary bodily functions than we once thought possible, but, and that, but nature will put limits on the extent of such control. But interestingly enough, scientists to this day are still trying to determine how much voluntary control we can actually exert over the things that we consider uh, you know, we have no control over. So, no, I've probably gone so fast. I'm so nervous, as usual. So, heart rate and heart rate variability. So, uh, we can't really cover most types of biofeedback, but we will be talking about heart rate because you have to use something to power the machine because um, that's the most common question that people ask me. They're like, biofeedback, what the hell are you using? So, we're actually using your heart rate. So, um, no surprise to anyone, um, your heart rate is the number of times that your heart beats per minute. Um, you can measure your heart rate by feeling your pulse, the rhythmic expansion and contraction or throbbing of artery, of blood forced through it by regular contractions of the heart. Everybody knows what their pulse is. We've all gone to the doctors. This is not a surprise. So, but here comes the part of the speech where you're all going to humor me and we're going to take our pulses. Uh, but I'm actually going somewhere with this, I promise. I'm not just doing this to make you guys, like, um, wonder, uh, 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 you know, I'm not going to pull out a camera and make you guys wonder. So this is the part you humor me and just pretend you're doing it. Everybody knows how to take their pulse. If not, it's up there. I want you to try and take your pulse. We're going to have a nice relaxing moment. And uh, what I want you to do is try to uh, feel you know, your heart rate, and when it's, uh, you want, you know, a permanent pulsing, that you're following it. So I'm going to wait here till you do it. So if you guys want me to go any farther, you guys kind of at least have to fake taking your balls. Come on. See, Joe's doing it. Oh, you guys are no fun. Come on, it's fun. Yeah, totally. Haven't you ever wanted to Come feel on. your heartbeat? Yeah, totally. <laughs> Thank you for the people who are humoring me. You are the newer hackers of the future. Thank you. For those who would have took their pulse, you would have been able to uh, discover what heart rate variability is. And that's actually the places in between the heartbeats. So thank you for not humoring me. Man, do you guys want me to come back or what? So basically, uh, um, heart rate variability, if you would have uh, taken your pulse, um, is um, 
you would have felt something called respiratory sinus arrhythmia. So if you took your pulse and you inhaled and you exhaled quickly, you would have felt a really cool double beat. And uh, that's what happens when your body is trying to um, meet the demands, either emotional or physical, of um, the beat of your heart. So, so, and this is why you should care, because there's a difference between heart rate and heart rate variability. Um, and you kind of have to know that if you're going to make a video game. So heart rate variability is the spaces in between. Um, heart rate variability is also a better gauge uh, than heart rate when it comes to uh, biofeedback. So in summary, biofeedback is a tool that helps conditions brought on or made worse by stress. Ooh, bright light. Uh, there are many types of biofeedback. Uh, biofeedback is not a magic bullet. And heart rate and heart rate variability are two different things. Yeah. Being <laughs> <laughs> the first being the beat of your heart itself and the other being the time in between beats. Wow, this can be, look so great on video. Hi, everybody. It's not me, it's the light. I'm not shy, honestly. So this comes the part that Joe Grant is actually going to come and explain to you um, the electronics of what we uh, did. Um, this, uh, we're actually using heart rate instead of heart rate variability. I just put it together like that and was going to change it at the last minute, but ran out of time. So everybody, Joe Grant. Yay. All right, so, um, yeah, what we have is some electronics to, that we're going to hook up to somebody and demonstrate this game that uh, Neon Rain's been working on for quite a while. Um, so I'm just going to go through a little bit about some basic electronics. Um, we have the schematic on here. There's a bunch of information online, so if you want to end up building your own system um, to play this game or write some, some other code, then you can. One of the, uh, yeah, there's some, some cool things with, with stress-related changes in your body and biofeedback and everything, and, and the heart rate and the heart rate variability is just one. But I don't know how many of you have actually, like, given a talk or had to do a presentation and you, your hands get sweaty or, like, someone cuts you off when you're driving and you're like, shit, you know, your palms get sweaty, your heart rate goes up, and that's the type of stuff that we're measuring to sort of change, to, to see your uh, physiological state and the change in your state. Um, so this is, you know, one example of that. Sorry. <laughs> Um, all right, so a little bit of electronics in a nutshell because we're going to go into the details of what the hardware actually is. Um, when you want to build this, you're going to want to know how to solder. You're going to want to know how to read schematics and just some basic electronics assembly, and I have a few little tips. Um, we don't have parts here for you to build your own, but if you do happen to like go to Fry's and get some stuff, you can put it together in the Hardware Hacking Village if you want. But you don't really need to understand electronics at all just to build the thing and get it working, which is good. Yeah, because... <laughs> Um, so yeah, the first thing, soldering, if you, uh, if you want to solder, is one way to do it, to put, it, to put together a board um, like the one Neon Rain's been working on, or I put together another version that, that I'll explain later. So you can solder and put it on a breadboard, or you can just use a plug board, like a little white um, plug board you can get at like Radio Shack, and you plug the parts into that. So there's a, a number of ways to do it, but soldering is the easiest because you sort of hard code everything um, onto a board. Uh, so just some information about it. Really, it's easy to do. A lot of people just do it wrong. So the two things you need to worry about, good heat distribution uh, from the soldering iron tip to the component and the pin and the pad that you're soldering to, and then make sure your surface is clean. And there's a video podcast on there that the colors are messed up, but you can go there and like see an entire diatribe that I made about soldering. Um, so reading schematics is another thing you're going to need to know because we're presenting a schematic and in order for you to put the circuitry together, you want to understand what it is. And the schematic, for those who don't know, is basically an electronic roadmap of how all the parts connect to each other. Each component of the circuit has its own little symbol um, and each component also has a part designator, which is usually an alphanumeric character followed by a number. So each part gets a unique um, identifier. So the example is like R1, C4, SW2, and you'll see all of that. That way we can identify individually every component that we're working with. And if I say to Neon Rain, oh, we got to change uh, resistor R2, I think it's bad, then she'll know exactly where to go to change it. Um, one thing I put together for something completely different a long time ago for some homebrew video game stuff I was working on was this like basic assembly manual for electronics. Just download that um, from the Make Store, and it's sort of cool. It has like a resistor color code chart and some other just basic things. Um, stuff you might run into when you're just building electronic stuff, and these are the most common things that usually will just bite you in the ass, and sometimes you overlook the simplest things before you go 
um, look at more complicated ones. So these are the ones you should look at first. Check your power, make sure um, that your system's actually receiving power, because if it's electronic, it probably needs something. Make sure your battery is in properly. Um, unlike some people that I've heard of that put their batteries in backwards on here and burn their fingers, look for polarity markings and put the battery in the right way. Faulty solder connections, so that's why you need to know how to solder properly, because a lot of people can solder, but they end up with, a, with, with, with what's known as a cold solder joint, where it looks like the solder is actually um, holding things together properly, but it gets a little loose over time and it starts wearing out, and uh, all of a sudden your circuitry doesn't work. So check for faulty solder connections. Uh, make sure you're putting in the wrong part, or make sure you're putting in the right part. <laughs> putting in the wrong part would pretty much suck. Um, a lot of these parts look the same when you're looking at, at resistors, for example, 1K and 10K. They look exactly the same except for one color of one band. So um, just pay attention to that. Make sure polarity is right for certain types of components that have to go in a certain way, like capacitors, like integrated circuits. Um, you know, just kind of basic things. Uh, what you might need to verify that your circuit is working before you want to actually attach it to your body and risk the chance of shocking yourself um, is a multimeter which is basically uh, what I like to say is the Swiss army knife of, an electro of electronic measurement tools. It provides you with all sorts of capabilities, measurement functionality for voltage, resistance, capacitance, etc. So we can use that to just make sure our voltage levels are proper coming into the board. And then the oscilloscope gives you a visual description um, and a vis visual indication of, how, of an electrical signal and how it changes over time. So that's sort of like if you look at my shirt, for example, that's an oscilloscope sine wave. Uh, if you look at your heart rate, you know, that's something that you could visually see on an oscilloscope or on an EKG, and, and Neon Rain's going to show you that. Um, so an oscilloscope's good, and what I did when I built the second circuit for her um, was just make sure that I could see some sort of semblance of heart rate on my oscilloscope before I hooked it up to myself. Um, and even when I did, I still had my wife standing next to me ready to kick me over if I started going into shock. Um, so the, the, the hardware that we're using um, is... Very simple. Um, I really didn't do anything. I just uh, built this circuit based on um, Jason's work, and uh, Neon Rain's been using this type of device for a long time, and basically it's just an amplifier circuit that we'll look at. It's really simple to build, so you can build something for maybe around 10 bucks, and I have a bill of materials. Most of the parts you can get at Radio Shack. There's a few parts, some of the, the, uh, the amplifiers, you, I don't think you can get at Radio Shack, but they might have a replacement part you can use, but still very cheap. Um, Ramsey Electronics sells a kit that I built a long time ago, and, and it is also an um, amplifier type of circuit like this. So that's a good place to start, too. If, you're, if, you're, you know, if you don't want to build something from scratch, you can try to build that kit first, and they have step-by-step -step instructions and everything. And you might actually be able to use that kit with her game. Yeah, we can neither confirm nor deny that. But I'm pretty sure, I mean, it's outputting a, a heart rate um, signal, and then you can capture variability from that. So the parts list for the board, we're using just three op amps, um, potentiometer, some discrete components. Uh, the cool thing that um, when I was reading these websites, when, when Neon Rain was like, you want to do this talk with me? I need more hardware. I'm like, okay. I was reading this website, and, and the person who did it was uh, using pennies for electrodes instead of like real medical grade stuff, which we're using here. I built on pennies, which was really strange, um, but it worked okay. Uh, and let's see what else. Yeah, battery. So all the stuff you can get at DigiKey, I put the DigiKey part numbers there because I like DigiKey, and you can order stuff from them and get it shipped the same day and get it very fast. Um, of course, if you do that, your total cost is going to end up being $39 instead of $9. But you'll have the parts. This is the schematic. I, I ripped it right from Jason's site. Um, so thank you, Jason, if you're here. Um, but what you have um, is uh, you have two, two inputs, which are, let's see, in minus is the upper left, and then in plus is a little bit down. And those are just taking signals in from electrodes on your body, measuring very, very, very tiny electrical signals um, generated from your body, from your, from your heart. Uh, and then we have another probe down a little bit below. There's a resistor. It says body. And that's just like a body reference that you put somewhere else in your body so you know, so those signals are referenced to something. Um, you have some amplifiers that go into some other amplifiers and then end up with a voltage that is um, the V out, which is your sort of heart rate signal. A little bit noisy if you have uh, electrodes that aren't put on properly, but that's all, of, that's all the system needs plugged into the sound port of your computer and then Neon Rain stuff takes over. So pretty just simple um, amplifier circuit. 
And I think I just said all of this. <laughs> yeah. um, so let's see. Some changes if you want. These are things that are recommended on Jason's site and also things that I had noticed. Um, if you, you can use LM324s instead for better performance if you want. But the pinout is different than the LF353. We're using the LF353 here. So if you do use the 324s, that's fine. And those are probably more easily available. But just make sure you're connecting things to the right place. And there is actually on Jason's website a good step-by-step -step of verifying the connections of uh, various voltage levels that you should be seeing before you hook it up to yourself. And I highly recommend doing that. <laughs> um, and I added bypass caps on, on, uh, on all of the amplifiers just to reduce noise. And what Jason has is the final stage um, on the right side. There's a 200K um, resistor connected um, for the final gain stage. And I put a 500K pot there instead so you can fine tune the gauge or the gain. So if, uh, if you're overloading your signal or it's too small, you can increase the gain or decrease the gain if you need to. Uh, and that's it. So now Neon Rain can talk about code. I'm totally, you know what to do with the mic, man. This is awesome. Although I'm going to have to stand on this side of the podium or nobody will see me. Everybody always complains about my talk because I'm so short that you can just kind of have a floating head for the whole, uh, for the whole talk. So. All right, um, this is the part where I'm going to talk about the code, as like the uh, thing says. Oh, I do want to point out, though, um, I know people are going to ask. So um, this is Joe's KY, not mine. Because um, <laughs> how the penny electrodes work is you have to have something in between to uh, complete the circuit. So yeah, I know people are going to ask. So uh, I just happen to have this stuff lying around. You, know, you never know. <laughs> you never know when you're going to need it. <laughs> But if you, do the, if you do decide to go the penny way, um, these electrodes um, I purchased off of eBay because I guess you guys have something called like the FDA or something. Uh, and uh, you're not allowed to buy these without um, having some sort of license. But we don't have that in Canada. So they were nice enough that I was like, I'm Canadian. I'm, I don't follow those laws. So um, right, it says uh, caution, as Joe just pointed out, caution US federal law restricts the use of this device to sale by or on the order of a physician. Yes, so as long as you have no follow-up questions, I am a physician. <laughs> yes, I'm not a sure physician or what. Um, so you can actually buy these um, someplace, um, if you're a physician, um, that they actually work a lot better than the penny electrodes. You'll get a better signal. Um, so you guys probably have gone to the hospital and have seen these. So if you know somebody who works in the ER and they really like you or something. So um, I highly recommend these more than the penny electrodes. Um, but if, I mean, you got to do what you got to do, right? So the penny electrodes do work, but I think you get more noise, I'm pretty sure. And it's, it's harder to keep it, um, if it's not solid, a solid connection, it's harder to uh, keep your signal um, solid, if that makes any sense. So... All right, <clears throat> did, did anybody read um, New Scientist at all? Anyone New Scientist readers possibly heard that I'm a programmer? Has anybody heard this? Yeah, I'm not. Um, I'm sure it, it was uh, not, they weren't specifically, uh, I'm sure they were confused, but I'm sure they're a very nice magazine, but a lot of people, that's one of the first things that they asked and asked me. And so they're like, oh, well, you program, right? And I'm like, I know of programming. Um, so I actually did not write this code. Uh, it was actually uh, two of my good friends. Um, we're in Canada, Old Grover and Psychedelic Bike. Um, so for the last year, they've had to deal with me and, and having to make this project. So um, they can't be here today because um, America makes them nervous. So, um, but they send the regards. And uh, so I just want to give a shout out to them um, because... Uh, they're the ones that made this all happen for the last year. Um, it always makes me quite sad when, it, when people come up to me and they always are like, oh, what you do is so amazing, but I can never do that. Um, neurohacking is just an emerging field. Like, it is what we define what it is. Everybody can bring something to the table. I once had someone tell me that I was a mediocre genius. Yeah, I was kind of smart, but you know, it really, really wasn't that impressive. And sometimes I feel like, you know, as much as I love the scene and have been part of it for many, many years, I find that some people, especially people who are coming in, emerging people who aren't um, old school, 
Um, someone who's very dear to me always makes the joke that you know how you become old school, right? You get old. Right, so uh, we have a lot of new people that are coming to DEF CON, and I just uh, I want people to realize when it comes to neurohacking, everybody has a brain, everybody can bring something to the table. This is an emerging field. Please, if you're interested, please, even if you can't program, even if you can't do electronics, there's so many different things. There's so many different ways that you can figure out things that are going on with your body, like. Um, like so many little experiments that you can do and report back on. Um, even though I do uh, this speech, I'm actually quite famous because I brought um, some things that were caffeinated pixie sticks with vitamins because I had read a white paper that people were using caffeine the wrong way, that you actually should only use two ounces every hour. But you kind of have to be careful because after eight hours you kind of get like methamphetamine-like effects if you decide to go with that. But I mean, there's so many things that you can talk about and post about and blog about because really neurohacking is what we decide it is. Um, it's because that hardware, all the hardware for this kind of thing um, hasn't been accessible, but now we have the open EEG project, so people can build their own EEG. And um, there's actually an open uh, transcranial uh, project, but um, please only uh, do stuff with that if you're quite uh, knowledgeable. And that, pro that, makes, me, that uh, makes me a little nervous. But, um, <laughs> but there are many things that you can do uh, without frying your brain. There's many things um, that, uh, many ways that you can take part. Please don't think that I'm any more intelligent than you. Like, I'm no more intelligent than anyone at this conference, anyone in this room, or especially anyone on this stage. So, <laughs> so you guys can all take part, and please, please do. Like, the whole reason um, why I made this code is the fact that um, I want you guys to take it. I want you guys to take and run with it. It's a proof of concept thing, you know? Heart rate. Please take it, put it in your favorite games, make it for your own. This is my gift to you. This is my gift to start you off and all becoming neurohackers. I want everybody to be able to contribute. Everybody can bring something to the table. So please, please do. Please don't think, I'm so tired of um, being here and you know, alone and not having, there's not a lot of people in the field. We, there's a few of us that are neurohackers and we make the joke that even though there's a huge movement, there's really only four of us that I hang around with. So if someone gets in a horrible plane crash, we can't be a movement anymore. There's just not enough of us. So please, please join us. So onto the code after my whole like, please become neurohackers, hack the planet um, kind of thing. Hack your brain, hack the planet. Um, a lot of people ask me why, why I chose Python um, uh, for the code, which is a good question. Um, I chose it because it was very easy for beginners to use. Um, and it was also very easy for the people, uh, for experts to pick it up as much as they hate the white space thing. Um, the people who worked with me, neither of them knew Python before we started. Um, it's free, it's platform independent because I wanted to make this so people could use it on Linux or Windows or whatever your cup of tea is. And the most important thing, someone gave me a book on Python as a gift. so. That was very important, so I was like, oh, Python, yeah, that goes, that goes for it. I have a book, we can totally work on that. Um, so, because, <laughs> you know, it wasn't in the library. So um, we actually use two modules as well, um, and one of them is Pygame. I don't know if anyone does Python or, or uses Pygame, but it's really kick-ass. Two thumbs up to the people there. Um, and it's also free, it's a small amount of code. And there's some tutorials on it, um, there's not a lot. So if you wanna write a tutorial, please email me and let me know, because I could use a really good tutorial. Um, we're also using something that's called Pi Media. Um, the reason we're using Pi Media is the fact that Pi Game wasn't enough to control the sound alone. It really didn't give us enough control. <coughs> but, um, it's, I, I'm not sure if it's an abandoned project or what they're doing, the documentation is. So, um, but it's free. Uh, you know, what do you expect? So, on to problems, because whenever you're making hardware, you're always gonna have some sort of problems. Um, Pi Media hasn't been tested for Mac. Uh, we, ch we were trying it, we were having problems. We were trying it with Linux. I'm not a Linux guru. I wasn't hanging out with Linux gurus. So we were kind of having problems getting it to work. It almost worked, but not enough to be able to present it. 
Um, another one of the problems is that, like I was saying, the documentation or um, Pi Media's lack of documentation, definitely. It really came down to the wire. I really, we couldn't get things to work correctly to like the last couple of months, I really did not think. Um, because the original hardware that I brought for the people who were in the suite, who came, was $100. So we kind of went from 100 to 10 because I wanted it to be more affordable. So I took the year and rewrote the speech and stuff. So um, since this is proof of concept, um, it, it can be really finicky. Um, please, please, please make sure that your computer is unplugged from the wall. That would be great. Um, not only for static, but I would feel really bad if you know I had to go to anybody's funeral. Uh, the chances of you shocking yourself are really, you probably have a better chance of a Russian satellite falling on your head, but you know we should all be careful. So, um, And another thing uh, is when you have the electrodes on, don't touch them. Like if anything touches them, you'll get a spike and it will interfere with um, uh, your, your readings. I'm just making sure that running well. Because we, so we can actually have a demo because you guys will totally, especially people from last year, if I was like, oh, don't have time for the demo, goodbye, see you next year, you guys would totally kill me. So, jumping off points. So like I said, this is your code. This is not my code, this is your code. I want you to take it and make it your own. This is not mine anymore. I'm moving on to other things now. This is all for you. So. I didn't use heart rate variability. I used heart rate to start because it was easier. You can turn it into heart rate variability. It's mathematical formulas and stuff if you're good at that. And you know, if you know how much to tip and can do that in your head, you know, that kind of thing. So um, you can totally change it to that. It's pretty easy to use. Um, also, uh, you can also try to make things easier and harder, you know, uh, gauging on. Um, or fix it so if people, if you're playing the game for a while, that you have a smaller and smaller window on how to relax. So you can also change it and do that too. And please, if you do any of this, please uh, email me and give me a heads up. I would love to see this stuff in action. Um, I'm going to be abandoning this and going in, in a completely different direction for next year. So, uh, and goal tracking. Um, I love the Wii Fit. I don't love the Wii Fit for anything that has to do with the exercises, but their goal tracking software is amazing. They have these little things that if you put so much time in, they change the colors of things, and they really know where it's at, like these uh, virtual rewards. So I, after I started playing with my Wii Fit, I was totally like, something like this in order to make it totally needs goal tracking, some sort of reward in order to keep you to do it, because even though it's a video game, you know, video games, on a side tangent, video games actually, a lot of people like them because it, it lights up your reward center. You're actually getting some sort of reward. You're like, yay, I finished this long, long, long game. And, and totally, I always love people when they're like, I finished this game. And they're so proud and they share it with everyone. And uh, you're like, yay. So, um, but they really, <laughs> but they really do feel like their adrenaline's going, they're hyped. It's totally like they ran a marathon, a virtual marathon. So um, goal tracking would be fabulous. I would love to see that as well. Um, and oh, guess what? Apparently it's time for the demo. Um, I have something that I lovingly like to call both Canadian and girl guilt, which means that I cannot choose any of you people for a volunteer because then there's a whole bunch of people who I wouldn't choose as a volunteer and I would feel horribly guilty and it'll keep me up at night and I'll cry in a corner. So Joe! How about you choose a volunteer? I have no guilt. <laughs> and I won't feel bad at all. So who wants to uh, give a demo and take their shirt off for science? Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Here's how it's going to work. Volunteer, take their shirt off. How come it's all guys? <laughs> <laughs> Man, you didn't tell me about this part. <laughs> in defense, um, we couldn't have a girl up here if we wanted. When I first started, <laughs> when we first started working on the hardware, me and uh, my good friend Psychedelic Bike, um, it was only working part time. And for some reason, it was only working when he used it. And so we got ourselves a drink and we were sitting and thinking and we're like, what is different between you and me? What is diff? What is. <laughs> Is that what's blocking the signal? So, um, 
there's actually, if, if you're a girl, you actually have to have an entirely different setup. You actually have to have an electrode here, an electrode here. So back in my hometown, we uh, totally had this joke where we're like, take your shirt off for science. So uh, yeah, so um, my friend totally teases that if he would have known he would have seen this many boobies, he would have totally like changed direction and would have been a neurohacker. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, put your hands up again. Hmm. What about? <laughs> okay. <laughs> this, this guy up here, he doesn't have his hand up, but he looks just like me. He looks just like you, He's man. He's like a little version of He's Joe. Like a t he totally looks so. like you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, look, we're not even related. Totally. You guys totally look the same. <laughs> so how, I take it you were voluntold. So he's 18. He's so 18. How many DEF CONs has he been to? My first one. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> first one. And that means that you would probably would have had, let's see, I would have been 14 if you're really my son. <laughs> I don't think that can happen. Joe! I had no idea. <laughs> Man, wow. Yeah. All right, so um, where, where is he going to sit? Um, well, I guess this side. So the point, so this game this that uh, we have to hook him up to electrodes, and then he's going to play this video game on the laptop yeah and if we have extra time we'll pull somebody else too so we'll see we'll see how it goes um and his heart rate he affects gonna, the game right he's gonna have to stand up how yeah, are we gonna do this up. like how we because we'd have to move the computer um but before that you have to take your shirt off. we totally know what we're doing we're just um yeah <laughs> totally um, do you still have okay he's having a little problem wanting to take his shirt off i think you guys Everyone need to give him, him some him. encouraging Yay, help, take, your take your shirt off take your shirt off His heart rate right now is probably through the roof. Yeah. He's and his palms are sweaty. Oh, I guess I should totally explain I how the game works. Huh? Well, uh, Joe's uh, helping our lovely assistant. Um, I don't know if he's going to stand or something. You guys have to figure that out. If uh, I take so my shirt off, will you take your shirt off? Woo! Will that, will that make it easier? <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter how much you cheer. I will not be taking my shirt off. <laughs> okay. Uh, what, what was that? All right, so he's going to stand here okay, and remove your clothing, sir. <laughs> I love being a DEF CON speaker. Did you guys know that? This is, he's, this is perfect because you're so nervous. It'll be awesome. Yeah, it'll totally be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> While they're arranging this, I guess I'll quickly explain how this one works. For the people who were around uh, last year for... This might take a little while, so I'll stall. Um, oh, it's right okay. um, For the people who around last year, I actually made a version of BioTetris. And I was like, oh, super simple, right? The faster, you know, the more your heart rate goes up, the faster the pieces will go. Can I even remove this? That would be, oh, sweet. I can go. Great. Now you can go see me. So the problem was, I don't know if a lot of people know, if you've attended a lot of my speeches, you know I actually have an anxiety disorder that is not treatable by chemicals because people are always like, how the hell did you get into this? It's in my purse. Can you that? So anyway, so what happened with the, um, the Tetris uh, problem is I was playing the game because I don't do this thing for you guys. I do it for me first, right? Because uh, I'm actually trying to cure myself because the doctors aren't able to do it. So I'm just going to keep building devices until I find something that works. That's just the way it is. I, I totally, I've been quoted as so the person who wants to go down in history for killing Prozac, and I truly do believe that. So um, so the bio Tetris thing had a, a flaw, which was the fact that the pieces would go faster and you didn't have a chance to recover, which your computer kind of, I don't know, my computer went flying across the room on a regular basis. So when I did this one, I decided instead what we would do is that if you got too stressed out, that we would pause, <laughs> that we would pause. It's in here, I swear. What's that thing doing in there? <laughs> <laughs> My DS. Thank you, Nintendo. I love there you. Okay, there we go. Um, that table. we would pause it instead um, uh, when someone got uh, too, uh, when some people got too stressed. So, um, so basically, a lot of people say, "Well, what's the point of this?" Um, well, the point of this is I want to give kids with ADD other options. A lot of people don't realize that you can't really um, that it's not a natural state. Of relaxation. People are always surprised when I tell them that mice can't relax. It's impossible. It's something that you need for um, 
you need a lot of, well, that's why we have the cortex for it. So not a lot of people, when you're just like, just relax, some people totally, do you want to start with this one or do you just want to go right to the game? I guess we'll go right to the game. He needs to be hooked up first. Yeah. Um, All right, here we I go. I totally know what I'm doing. Where are the stickers? Yeah, the stickers Sorry. are here. All right. Um, okay. Neon Rain's going to put on the stickers. I'm putting on the stickers? We should have another volunteer to put on the stickers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, wait. I guess I'll have to go on that tangent in a little bit. Okay. Uh, mm, uh. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> um, you don't have your shirt off. <laughs> Woo! Yay, yay. Do you know how hard it is to take your shirt off on stage? Yeah, give him some encouragement. Very hard. Yay. Be happy you took this ball for you guys. Look at that. There's oh. already blue markings on. Is that where we put the electrodes? <laughs> oh my right God! It looks markings? like he has a birthmark that you totally could put electrodes cool. on. Who would have thought that would have happened? Only at DEF CON. That's amazing. It's totally amazing. It's destiny. <laughs> 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 All right. So the two electrodes, the the one down here on his arm, is the uh, the body, just the reference, and that can pretty much go anywhere um, away from this area, ideally down on the leg almost in like the groin area or down inner thigh, but uh, we couldn't get him to take his, <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't get him to take his pants off. <laughs> so the arm will do, and then there's just, um, sometimes depending on, on the person, you get a better signal if you have both electrodes up here, kind of right above the, the pectoral muscle. Um, but we were messing around with AJ and experimenting to see what worked best for the demo, and it's uh, down here somewhere, so <laughs> this should work, and yeah. See, we totally fooled you guys. <laughs> but we may pull someone else up. The problem yeah. is the electrode placement. So, um, and he'll totally tell you how much he hates us. Like, because I had to move the electrodes out, and I'm like, rip. And he's just like, I hope something bad happens to you. And it's his first DEF CON, so he's being a very good sport. Okay. All right. So he is hooked up, yep. and he's still breathing. All right. So there's the first program that we're running is like a test program to show his heart rate, and that's beautiful. Yay. <laughs> and then, is, are you ticklish? What if we, like, tickle you? Does your heart rate go? <laughs> 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 I guess so. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, can, can the uh, audio guy turn up the sound coming from the laptop, please? We don't want to miss the amazing um, beeps and boops from this. Is it turn on? Yeah. So the upper left. Do you, Desiree, you, do you want to explain the what we're seeing? Okay, you can tell uh, if it's a normal heart rate. Generally, um, uh, people with depression have lower heart rates, and people, oh, there we go. Love the little Joe Grand symbols. <laughs> Oh, your heart rate's still too. Are we? Can we go yet? Yay! And the game stops. Because and the game stops when you're too stressed. So let's all sing him some lullabies. Calm, uh, calm blue ocean. <laughs> calm blue ocean. Woo! Check that out. Uh -oh. oh, there we go. As you can see, proof of concept. It works. If you're ever on stage and need to learn how to calm down, this is your game. <laughs> oh, come on, you guys gotta love that. Do you not love that? Give him a round of applause. <laughs> Do we want to try with somebody else? Yeah, so now we can rip the okay. electrodes off of him. <laughs> <laughs> do we do you, do we want to get it? <laughs> I guess we have we have a few more minutes for one more demo. If do we want a real here. volunteer from the audience, possibly? She'll pick. No, I'm not picking. Oh. You have to pick. You have to pick. Who took their pulse earlier? Who actually yeah, took who their actually pulse? Took, who's not lying about it? What was it? one of those people who took their pulse? Sixty. He took. He actually has a digit. Okay. If you had a number, okay. We we'll can. All he, right. he either actually took his pulse or Yay. he made up a number. <laughs> Nicely done. Yay. Yay! Everyone give a hand to AJ. So since I've never met this...
uh, other person before who should really get to introduce himself. Um, I, I'm not really sure where the electrodes need to be on. So, um, oh, thank God on. you don't have a lot of hair. He I love you already. Um, so, uh, so we're going to give it a shot. It, it may be, it will be a little more fiddly, and therefore you understand why we had a, a stooge originally. So, is anyone else annoyed about that beeping? Is it just me? Okay. <laughs> All right, so we'll figure this out. Um, you stall, are you doing this? Okay, yay. So basically, this is um, how you do it at home after you build your hardware, because I know you guys are all gonna run home. So yeah, so you put one on the body and two on the chest, depending on uh, some uh, different people, you get different types of signals. So yeah, you, you wanna, right. Yeah, totally, if like at the hospital, there we go. My, my great labeling. So we're going to give oh, it a now shot. We have to touch you. Yeah, totally. Right, so um, and the best thing to do, too, is make sure you always mark which one's your body, because when you get like this, you're like, oh, which, which uh, and then you totally have to check it with a multimeter and stuff, and it's a lot of pain. So I just put a, a little tape on it so I always know. All right, so we're going to have to see if this works. Okay, is that always make sure your electrodes are on firmly. <laughs> Because uh, if not, so if this works on the first try, I'm going to be amazed. But, you know, we always have to show demos that don't work, right? You know, just because we lucked out. Um, someone who was very beloved to me when I said I, I was worried about my demo, uh, totally told me, like, demos don't work at DEF CON. Forget about it. It's not going to happen. That's so, why we had a plant in the Yeah, audience. so we had to have a plant. So if we'll, it doesn't work, you'll be able to see what it looks like when it doesn't work. Yeah, it just doesn't <laughs> work. Okay, there's a lot of static going on. See, sort of and, and here's a fine example of when it doesn't work. Thank you. Um, so as you can see, these are variables that there's no way that it's somebody's heart. Um, it's the placement of the electrodes that are doing it, as you could tell, because the hardware worked. So um, this one probably has to be more over there. So, um, so definitely, and you can see that the signal changes where the electrode is, so we'll have to restart it. Actually, that's oh, do we got it? Better, we got yeah. it? Yeah, but the problem is, um, it takes a, a certain amount of samples to figure out what your limit is in order to play, right? So, oh, and just so you know, there's two programs. The original program I was running, you you can get them online. You can get them at DEF CON. So basically, you just grab it. It's a module. Just throw it in whatever else you want. You know, you want to play Pac-Man? Throw it in Pac-Man. You want to throw it in any, like, open source game? You can totally do it. Uh, it's It should be easy peasy. If not, you have my sincere apologies ahead of time. So, oh, that looks like a heart rate. Ooh. I, huh? He's half dead. There we go. There uh, we go. And then this is, yeah. this is a uh, shoot. So in case those of you who don't get the inside joke, those little G's are actually Joe Grand's symbol. So I, uh, so that's uh, the whole thing. It was her idea. Yeah, it was my, uh, yeah, it was all my idea. So, um, ta-da! <laughs> what time do we end? We're, we're almost okay. done it. Yeah, so that's it. Thank you guys for thank you very much oh. for our lovely uh, audience member uh, for helping us as well. That's too high. Cool. Thank you. Um, oh, my name's Tim. Thanks, Tim. Everybody, thanks, Tim. Thanks for coming. I'll have a whole new speech next year, hopefully. We'll see. I'm trying to do a do-it-yourself sleep clinic, so we'll see whether or not I pull it off. If not, it will be the year after. So, uh, yeah. So we'll see everybody. Bye, guys. Thanks for coming. I truly, truly appreciate it.